Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for the Festival of Cinema NYC Virtual Filmmaker Interviews. I am Stephen S. Miller, cabaret superstar, and I'm joined by my fabulous co-host, Bonnie Rose, star of Screen and Television. And we are so excited today to be joined by Kirby Atkins, director of the film Mosley, uh, which will be playing on Saturday, October 3rd at 7 p.m. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're so thrilled that you are here with us. So let's just jump right in. Um, what was the premise and what is the premise of the film? Well, the premise of the film is basically uh, what if we had uh, some creatures who were in, involved that were basically work animals that uh, for farmers and, you know, pulling plows and carts and these sorts of things. And then they discovered that long ago their ancestors stood upright and had hands. And what happened to uh, devolve this species to become sub, uh, subordinate sort of slaves to, uh, to these farmers. And, th and th to be honest, the idea came from when I was a kid watching cartoons and I would watch, you know, you'd have Mickey Mouse and Mickey Mouse would have his best friend who was Goofy the dog. But Mickey Mouse also had a pet, if you recall, who was also a dog, right? So, but this dog was naked and on all fours and couldn't talk. And I just remember as a kid just being confused going, how is it that there are two kinds of dogs in this world? One that has a mortgage and drives a car and the other uh, is, it seems to be sort of cursed or devolved in some way. And that became sort of the, that became the, the germ that started the story. And that leads into the following question, which is perfect. What was the inspiration for this film and to tell this story and why now? Well, I, the, I had the idea for the film and started working on it many years ago. And I started actually cutting the film together with storyboards and just drawing and making the film myself. And I needed voices. And at that point, my daughter was, my daughter was seven years old. And I thought, let's just play. I'll put a microphone down and we'll just play out scenes together and we'll just see what comes of it. And it turned out into this beautiful, unhindered performance. Child actors are the worst, right? But kids who are actually pretending and actually engaged. Uh, and she, she, had, she was completely not self-conscious. She was just pretending. It was like improv with a seven-year-old, right? And it was such a beautiful performance though, that it, that actually became the inspiration for making the movie because that exact performance, that unhindered spontaneous improv with a seven-year-old is actually the per performance that you'll hear in this film. It's me and my daughter playing out the, playing out the thing. She's making up part of the scene as, as uh, spontaneously as we're going. And we just used that audio when we went into uh, into the studio to create the film with our the rest of our cast, which is John Reese Davies from Lord of the Rings and Raiders of the Lost Ark, Reese Darby from uh, Flight of the Concords and Jumanji, Lucy Lawless, who's Xena Warrior Princess, right? And uh, Tamira Morrison, who is Boba Fett in Star Wars. So we got all that. We got that fantastic cast, and we have my seven-year-old daughter. By the time we finished the film. My daughter was 20 years old and off to college. So that's how long it took. So it's like a time, the film is like a time capsule of our family during that time. Uh, and I think it's palpable when you watch the film, you really do get a sense that there's some real spontaneity and chemistry going on because the, the kid in the, in the, vo the child of the voice, the voice of the child in the film is actually somebody just pretending on the spot and not reading a script just making it up as she goes along and it's just it's beautiful and so i think everybody's going to enjoy the film just based upon that alone well you could certainly feel that in the moment and Stephen and i just, just absolutely discussed that um and that goes into the next kind of question was that how did you go about since now that you've shared with us it's taken that long how did you go about funding this project and also getting um, the kind of caliber, and I hate to use the word caliber, but you know, the kind of, um, some of them are celebrities to work on uh, this uh, animated 
film, which is quite extraordinary and Thank also you. has a very strong message right now. Yes, it does. And I'll, I can get to that. I can try to, I'll try to answer all those questions in a row here. Uh, well, number one, it was the New Zealand Film Commission and China Film Group were looking to do a, the, what would be the first co-production uh, between the two countries. And so it was basically a business deal that was looking for a movie. And they didn't particularly know what movie they wanted to do, but they wanted to do a co-production. And I come up with a film pretty much ready out of the box. At least I've already cut the animatic together with all of these voices, or particularly the voices of myself and my daughter. Uh, the people who got, a, got very excited about it because it, it seemed to be ready to go into production immediately. And I think that was the big, uh, the, the, the big thing that was appealing to the New Zealand Film Commission and China Film Group is that we were ready to go immediately. The cast is an all Kiwi cast. So it's a, it's a, we wanted to cast as many New Zealanders as we could. And so of course I couldn't pass up Lucy Lawless, right? I mean, she's, Kiwi royalty. John Rhys Davies from Lord of the Rings, he's Welsh, but he moved to New Zealand after Lord of the Rings, and he was a joy to work with. He was fantastic, classically trained actor uh, from the old Vic and all this other kind of stuff. And then, of course, Rhys Darby is a great uh, Kiwi comedian, and so putting all these people together, and they were very excited about the project and, and very excited about what they had seen up to that point and the uh, how spontaneous the performance is felt, which is not you typical in animation. Usually in animation, everything feels a little bit canned, right? You can have people read their parts, but they read them months apart from each other, because who knows, you just edit all this stuff together. I wanted everybody in the same room, so it felt like a real, uh, real uh, chemistry between the, the people involved. In regard to the fact of the time, timefulness of the, of the film right now, I, I think it absolutely is. Because if anything, what, it, uh, what this is teaching us is about the fact that uh, there is a real lack of empathy in the world right now. And m what, Mosley, what, the, uh, what Mosley, I think, tries to teach you is that there are, peop there are people in this world who are feeling things, <laughs> who, are, who are suffer and who are feeling isolated and feeling uh, uh, oppressed. And some, and oftentimes we are so callous to what, uh, to, and, and so self-involved that we forget that these people exist. And so in that regard, Mosley, that's, that's the great thing about fables and fairy tales is that everybody tends to read their own life into the story and it ends up becoming an allegory for us and it becomes very personal. That's why fairy tales always people take them there's a magical quality to them to where you can read a metaphor for your own life and your own experience. And everybody sees something different. You can't say that about all the president's men or the Godfather or things like that, because those aren't fairy tales, but fairy tales have this amazing quality to the fact that people, it's sort of a one size fits all sort of thing. People can put the story on and feel like it's a metaphor for themselves. And so mostly is a, can be, has, has an applicability to me, a metaphor for a lot of things that are going on in the world right now. But I think one thing in particular is that this need for empathy that, that, we, that we as human beings need to uh, completely uh, uh, strengthen in, in us as a human family. I absolutely couldn't agree more. I think it's a perfect fit for this time right now. Um, our last question is, how excited are you to see this? Hopefully you can at a drive-in in Queens, five story high. I when didn't I, ever expect to be in a drive-in. <laughs> when I first heard, I mean, cause the, Mosley has been in a few film festivals and I've been excited to be a part of them, you know, even though they've all gone virtual. When I heard that this was the plan that uh, for the fe Festival of Cinema was going to do this, I was so, so very excited because number one, what a fantastic way to watch your work up, up that big, but also it creates that, that sense of community all over again. Uh, 
it, it's it's going to be fun because I, I remember as a kid going to a drive-in movies and there, you still get that sense of community and you get to still get that, but it's all nice and safe and everybody's in their cars and everything. So it's going to be the best of both worlds and quite a novelty to, to see the film projected that big. So I can't wait. Yes, I'm coming. So. We're so thrilled that you're going to be there. And we just wanted to thank you so much. I'm gonna throw it back to Stephen. Is there anything that you'd like to share? Well, we just wanna thank Kirby so much for joining us and bringing this fabulous film to the screen and all the hard work and the years that you've put into this. Thank you. Well, thank you for hosting this and thank you, thank you guys for uh, putting this festival together. And I, can't, I couldn't be more thrilled with how this has come together. So thank you so much. So get out there, see this film. It's wonderful. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for joining us here, my fabulous co-host. And remember, get out there and see the film. And until next time, have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you at the drive-in. Drive